Hello and welcome to our new lecture of the English novel. Today we will have the second chapter of James Joyce's novel, which is entitled as a portrait of the artist as a young man. Without further ado, let's get started. The summary of chapter two is going to start with Uncle Charles and his relation to Stephen and then to the Belvedere College and the success that Stephen achieved there as a, a young artist, such as a writer and an actor. Then we will move on to the disappointment of Stephen in his father and how his frustration in the actions and the misjudgment that his father did which led to uh, the downfall of his family. Then we'll make some reference to the moving of the Dudless family to a new house, which wasn't really promising, but frustrating to Stephen and the rest of the family. Finally, we'll talk about the first physical love and the feeling of guilt that um, accompany such action by Stephen. The chapter opens with Stephen's at home. He's spending the summer with his family, who have moved from Bray to Blackrock, about five miles southeast of Dublin. Stephen enjoys being with his father and his great uncle, Uncle Charles. He begins each day observing Uncle and his routine activities. After that, Uncle Charles and Stephen take their usual daily walk through the town marketplace. Their next stop is the park, where they meet, as usual, Mike Flynn, an old friend of Stephen's father. Mike is training Stephen to be a runner. هذه الجزئية من الرواية تمثل تعلق ستيفن مع أنكل تشارلز وكيف أثر في بناء شخصيته بالإضافة إلى مايك فلين والذي دربه على الركض مما سيؤثر مستقبلا على نتاجه الرياضي حيث سيكون عداء في الجامعة The other part of the novel is Belvedere College and the Young Artist The next scene opens about two and a half years later Stephen is probably 14 years old, a confident young man at Belvedere, preparing to go on stage in the school play. During his years at Belvedere, Stephen has grown a taste for writing and acting. Listening for his cue, Stephen waits outside the theatre and is confronted by two classmates, Heron and Wallace, who propose a schoolboy prank. They mock Stephen's seriousness as a model youth and tease him about a girl who has shown interest in Stephen's upcoming performance in the play. Stephen remembers his first year at Belvedere. It was a time when he felt terribly insecure about his home life and his future. He had begun to take pride in the success of his essay writing when Mr. Tate, the English teacher, discussed one of Stephen's essays, saying that it contained heresy. في كلية بالفدير أظهر ستيفن بعض القدرات الإبداعية في الكتابة والتمثيل مما جعل بعض أصدقائه يحاولون مضايقته والنيل منه من باب الحسد والغيرة وهناك أيضا حادثة أثارت كبرياء ستيفن وجعلته فخورا بنفسه وهي امتداح مدرس اللغة الإنجليزية لمقالة كتبها ستيفن ستيفن رول in the play is that of a farcical pedagogue and he is somewhat embarrassed when he thinks about the girl viewing his schoolboy performance as a result after he finishes his lines he rushed off the stage, past the audience and his family. He is confused, floundering in a sea of wondered pride, fallen hope and baffled desire. The disappointment of Stephen and his father. In addition to developing the theme of a young artist's feeling of alienation, Joyce also stressed that theme of betrayal, particularly in Stephen's relationship with his father. Simon Dudless, although he fails to meet his family's financial needs, is extremely concerned with providing a quality education for his children. Stephen's father disappoints Stephen, however, because Simon and the other men laugh about Stephen's confrontation with Father Conmey. A triumphant moment in Stephen's young life, not something to have hearty laugh about, Stephen feels dishonored and patronized by his elders. He particularly takes his father's betrayal to heart. And years later, 
he will discover that he cannot forgive his father when Simon needs his son's sympathy and emotional support. أحد النقاط الرئيسية اللي أدت إلى خيبة الأمل من قبل ستيفن بوالده هي مسألة المشاكل المالية التي مرت بها العائلة حيث اتهم ستيفن والده بضعف التصرف وعدم مقدرته على إدارة العائلة بشكل صحيح بالإضافة إلى موقف قد نراه بسيطا وهو أن سايمون كان يتذكر موقف ستيفن وهو مواجهة ستيفن للأب كومني حيث أن ستيفن كان يعتبره نصرا كبيرا له وتأثر كثيرا عندما رأى أن والده يسخر من هذا الأمر بضحكات عالية هذا الأمر وتراكم الأسباب الأخرى أدت إلى تغلغل هذا الكره في داخل ستيفن لوالده حتى عندما كان سايمون في أمس الحاجة إلى الدعم المعنوي من قبل ابنه ستيفن We also have the physical love that Stephen had as a reflection for his frustration in his family. Frustrated and disillusioned, Stephen dissociates himself from his family each evening. No longer a boy, Stephen wanders through the dark, slimy streets of Dublin, trying to, trying to appease the fierce longing of his heart. And one night, feeling like a baffled, prowling beast, He arrives at the heart of Dublin's brothel district. Standing in a darkened doorway is a young pink-gowned prostitute who invites Stephen to her room. It is here that Stephen is seduced into his first sexual experience. He surrenders himself to her body and mind. The chapter concludes as Stephen, having failed to form a bond with his father, Surrender to sex, he will find warmth and comfort by giving himself over to a sexual emotions which have been consuming him. Although he longs to escape the filth and poverty of Dublin and launch out into a pursuit of pure truth, beauty and love, his quest takes a detour in a short-lived moment of physical gratification in the welcoming seductive arms of a young Dublin prostitute. هذا الأمر سوف يؤثر على تصرفات ستيفن المستقبلية إيمانه حزنه تغلغل الشعور بالذنب في داخله وهذا ما سنلاحظه في الفصول القادمة كانعكاس لهذه الحادث وأخيرا لدينا مقارنة فكرة الأسطورة دالاس مع عائلة دادلس The visit of Cork also reveals the irony in Joyce Hughes of the Dedalus myth. The mythical Dedalus, unlike Simon, was a capable, devoted father to his son, Icarus, and was genuinely concerned about the boy's future. In contrast, Simon has always rebelled against most of his paternal responsibilities, and as a result, He has remained superficial and infectual in his fatherly role. The Dallas ultimately attempt to impart valuable advice regarding the ways of the world to his son, but Simon has failed to do this. His selfish sentimentality has driven Stephen further into his own moral and emotional morass. المقارنة هنا بينت كيف أن Dallas the myth. أن في أسطورة دالاس كان هناك رابطا قويا جدا بين الأب والابن حيث أن نصائح الأب لابنه انتشلت إكاروس من براثن السجن إلى الحرية رغم النهاية المأساوية للأسطورة أما في قصتنا فإن هناك اختلافا كبيرا بين سايمون الأب وستيفن حيث أن سايمون لم يلتزم بمهامه الأبوية ولم يكن مثالا يحتذى به من قبل ستيفن مما أدى إلى شرخ كبير في داخل تركيبة الأسرة وهنا نأتي إلى استنتاج بعض الأسئلة المهمة في هذا الفصل ومنها What is the comparison between the myth and the family name of Stephen? What is the impact of physical love psychologically on Stephen? You can find the answer in the handouts so please dig in Last but not least, what are the sources of disappointment of Stephen and his father and how he handled them? هذه ليست كل الأسئلة التي قد تأتي حول هذا الفصل ولكن من الممكن أن نقول أنها من أهم النقاط التي يجب التركيز عليها في هذا الفصل. إلى هنا تنتهي محاضرتنا لهذا اليوم. ألقاكم في المحاضرة القادمة إن شاء الله.